the ankles and feet. Get the patient to remove the shoes and socks and uncover the legs to at least the knees. Look at the skin. Deformities affecting the forefoot include hallux vulgus, which is a fixed lateral deviation of the main axis of the big toe, and clawing, a fixed flexion deformity, and crowding of the toes. These are all common in rheumatoid arthritis. Sausage deformities of the toes occur with psoriatic arthropathy, ankylosing spondylitis and writer's disease. Look for the nail changes that suggest psoriasis. Inspect the transverse arch of the foot, which runs underneath the metacatarsophalangeal joints, and the longitudinal arch, which runs from the first metatarsophalangeal joint to the heel for flattening. Calluses over the metatarsal heads on the plantar surface of the foot occur with subluxation of these joints. Starting with the ankle, feel for swelling around the lateral and medial malleoli. Let me know if it's sore at any stage when I'm moving your foot. Move the tailor ankle joint. Dorsiflexion is tested by raising the foot towards the knee and plantar flexion by bending it the other way. Now test inversion and eversion of the subtalar joint. Hold the ankle and turn the foot inwards and outwards. The mid-tarsal, mid-foot joint allows rotation of the forefoot when the hind foot is fixed. This is done by steadying the ankle with one hand and rotating, twisting the forefoot. Again, tenderness rather than range of movement is noted. Squeeze the metatarsophalangeal joints by compressing the first and fifth metatarsals between your thumb and forefinger. Tenderness suggests inflammation. Now test for Morton's metatarsalgia. Press upwards from the sole of the foot just proximal to the proximal metatarsophalangeal joints of the third and fourth toes. Pain here is due to entrapment and swelling of the digital nerve between the toes. It is associated with pain and numbness of the sides of these two toes. Each individual interphalangeal joint is then assessed by feeling and moving. These are typically affected in the seronegative spondyloarthropathies. Extremely tender involvement of the first metatarsophalangeal joint is characteristic of acute gout. In this case, the joint also looks red and swollen. Palpate the Achilles tendon for rheumatoid nodules and tenderness due to Achilles tendonitis. Also palpate the inferior aspect of the heel for tenderness. This may indicate plantar fasciitis.